All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Pepperstone live event here on YouTube. My name is Thomas Atkinson. As always, I'm joined by Tyrone Abella. Today, we're here to talk to you about some super exciting topics. And one of the topics that we always love to discuss is, of course, technical analysis, and more importantly, candlesticks. We're bringing it back to basics, but in an advanced way today, Tyrone. How have you been? And uh, are you excited for this week's non-farms, FOMC, and of course, big earnings out of the US stocks as well? Oh boy, it's an action-packed week. All right, yeah, very excited to be here, Tom. Uh, for all of you who aren't in yeah, Melbourne or Victoria, man, it is like winter hit us with a blast. So we are very, very comfortable in doing our webinar tonight and bringing you candlestick patterns as a starting point. One of our favorite topics, actually, one we probably don't um, yeah give enough credence to in a lot of the things mm. that we do, uh, mainly because there's just so many topics that we talk about. But we love candlesticks and especially patterns in the right area. So we're looking forward to bringing you some of our favorite setups tonight. All right, just before we get into everything, we've of course got a quick disclaimer, but I'd also like to say a big hello to Brad, Evan, John, Dave, Ozzy Cobber, Christine, uh, Christian, Christine, sorry, uh, Roman, Pablo, and Stephen. Thank you very much for joining us. And let's just quickly get that disclaimer out of the way, Ty, and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, so let's begin with some of the topics we'll be discussing today. And today will be a bit of a hands-on session where we'll actually go in and we'll discuss the ideas uh, that we're seeing here or we're talking about in terms of candlesticks with some live chart analysis. And we always like to look at live charts, look at a little bit of the history, understand how we can bring candlesticks together with other price action methods and to really build out a strong system. So we'll be looking at how trends and technical indicators can reveal entry and exit points We'll also be looking at why risk management is going to be crucial when implementing any candlestick pattern, especially around some of our favorites, Ty, the uh, evening star, the morning star. I know you like those. I particularly like the tweezer. Uh, very, very good when added with other features. And of course, we're going to then look at where we can see these maybe appear. So we'll be using a little bit of supply and demand on top of that to understand where big banks and other play other big players kind of potentially are showing their hand through candlesticks. Remember, a candlestick in the wrong location, Tyrone, it's just not good enough, is it? It's not necessarily, I mean, it, a lot of this is dealing in minute percentage increases. So it's all about where is this pattern being formed? Absolutely. And look, it's we're going to show you some really good examples tonight uh, of where uh, the candles should be appearing and why when they appear in the middle of nowhere, uh, they really are as useless as, um, as the proverbial. Uh, John says that he wasn't done reading the disclaimer. John, exit immediately and go back and watch the replay. <laughs> so uh, Rewind about it, a minute, John. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to read. That's, that's all good. Very, very important though. Um, yeah, the disclaimers are very important because, yeah, there's a lot of jurisdictions that purpose don't have to cover. So, yeah, look, most definitely uh, where they appear is very, very important. And, and realistically, when you can combine them with the strategy, you've heard us talk about a lot of strategies, right? Like uh, every fortnight we come to you with a totally different strategy but when you bring them all together candlestick patterns and candlesticks in general are very very important when they are combined with the strategies that we talk about so tonight we're mm -hmm. going to show you some that are formed actually very very recently actually on some of the biggest mm. uh, players in the world and uh, you'll see how powerful they can be but we're also going to show you some examples of ones that where they form uh, in the middle of nowhere why they are so insignificant and and they really should be ignored it's a little bit like yeah, having the information in front of you is very, very powerful if you know how to understand it. But um, a little bit of information in the wrong hands, Tom, can be quite dangerous, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like that That you need to go a little bit further on, Ty. I know some people where they have they have a little bit of knowledge, that's way too dangerous. Sometimes it's better <laughs> to have either none or a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, let's go over to a chart we've used a lot, which uh, will come into handy fashion, I guess, and Ty knows what's going to come next. But we're obviously going to talk about here <laughs> uh, supply and demand today. And the reason I want to talk about these areas is because yeah. candlestick patterns that form on breakouts on either side of accumulations or uh, distributions, or of course, supply and demand zones can be very powerful as trap finders. So you can actually use certain patterns that we're going to talk about today to see trapped liquidity, which is a very common and very powerful concept. And that can happen a lot around session opens, Tyrone. So we can see it around specifically if you're a currency trader around the London opens, and then, of course, around those New York open where the London session goes into New York. Even if you're in the Asian session as well, certain currencies, yens, uh, gold as well, when those Asian sessions start opening up, 
you'll see a lot of liquidity and that liquidity can be uh, trapped and you can see that with candles. And when you see that, then we're effectively seeing the study of force type, which is, of course, one of Wyckoff's <laughs> concepts. So you I knew it was coming, but uh, it's always a big thing. I won't go through it too much. We talk about it all the time. You can go back and watch some of the other Pepperstone webinars and sessions. So what, what are we really talking about when we're talking about major currencies and, and candlestick patterns? We always want to be focusing on the big majors as much as possible because that's where candlestick patterns tend to work out best, don't they, Ty? I do find yes. that you want that liquidity when it comes to even considering these patterns and, and um, how they're going to work. Absolutely. Look, liquidity is is one thing that you always want in your favor anyway, right? Like the more liquidity there is, the more stable the market we find. Like if you mm -hmm. uh, find very liquid stocks or even currency pairs that can be a little bit out there or left to field, uh, patterns and levels don't seem to hold up anywhere near as well. But the general consensus is that when there is a, a big, big uh, volume of liquidity at play, there's lots of traders, right? And um, mm -hmm. and candles actually mean something. So what, what we're effectively looking at when we're talking about price action and candles is the buyer and seller interaction at particular levels. Now, it stands to reason that the more people that are actually interacting with that particular candle that we're looking at. So say, for instance, if we're talking about a daily candle, if we're getting you know three major world markets operating inside that candle, and obviously all the liquidity is there, we're getting a real... Uh, real-time view actually of what's actually happening every the london market the us market the australian market the asian market has all had an opportunity to actually review decide and actually push the market in a particular direction so the more people that see it uh, the more important that candle is so liquidity is vitally important when it comes to candles and candlestick patterns uh, obviously where the where they appear is very very important and uh, just touching on what tom said when they're in support and um and resistance zones or supply and demand zones they're very very important zones for their own reasons but when these candlesticks happen and there's big liquidity that's really giving you all the clues you need to really jump on um, and actually take advantage of those ones that you actually see so Tyron, these are just some of the most common ones that people know, and we'll go into some more advanced ones later on. But what is your favorite when it comes to these bullish, bearish, and indecision candles? Is there any one in particular you'd say, you know what, I've traded that the most and that tends to work out well for me? Uh, is yep. there anything here that, that comes to mind? I am absolutely in love with um, uh, the, the particular the hammer, the shooting star, the evening star, and morning star patterns are, are some of my favorites. And, and the reason is is that those candles uh, or those candle patterns actually take three uh, different uh, candles to actually form, especially the evening star and the morning star, right? So if you're talking about a weekly setup or a daily setup, you require three days for that pattern to, to work out mm -hmm. on a daily or three yep. weeks for it to work out on a weekly chart. Now, why I like that is because when you find those patterns at a very, very important zone, yeah, the market has had you know three significant periods, whether it's a weekly or whether it's a daily, to actually consider that level and act on it. So it really gives you the um, the the big big volume of time. Uh, it's very very important. One day yeah can yeah, come and go. Uh, one week can come and go, but when you're talking about a three week period for an evening star or a morning star, it's extraordinarily significant. And if you go back in time and have a look at those patterns, the ones that form on weekly charts, you might be very, very surprised at how far they actually go when they do reverse. Yeah. So they're, they're, a, they're a good uh, basically add on and start scaling in potential, isn't it? When, when you get these evening Absolutely. stars and morning stars, especially when they're on weeklies and dailies. Can you explain to us a little bit about the importance on the gap each side? Do we have to have the gap both sides or is that something more of if it's there, it's better? Look, if it's there, it's better. There's no question about that. But because a lot of the people that we're probably talking to tonight and who trade in general are operating in a, you know, a, a basically a, a 24, five and a half market. Gaps mm -hmm. are not as, um, they're not as prevalent as they used to be because the market mm -hmm. just doesn't stop, right? So it's it's not as uh, common now that we actually get the gap. If you can get them, it's great, but I'm not mm -hmm. dissuaded by them anymore because really we're, we're operating in a market that, you know, very rarely um, get shocked, really, isn't it? I mean, we're, we're in a market now that um, is trading trillions and trillions of dollars every day. So it takes a lot to, to gap a market. And they're, they're, they're a little bit more prevalent in, um, if you're trading CFDs, for instance, right? So if you're trading mm -hmm. the um, right. uh, an Australian stock where it actually does close for, you know, a big portion of the day, you are going to get more gaps. And and when they are when they do appear, they, they certainly, they are important, but they're not an absolute necessity anymore, especially mm. in indices and currencies that actually don't ever seem to stop trading. 
That's correct. So it's more of it. There's a difference that there's a nuance here, which is an advanced technique. It's it's understanding that other than weeklies, in general, you're not going to see gaps in currencies. You're not going to see yeah. gaps on the uh, gold or commodities markets. It's going to be more specifically to usually stocks where you'll see these gaps yeah. and indices. And that's, um, I've just typed in iron ore there, <laughs> Ty. Uh, I see it happen all the time in iron ore stocks, uh, the Rio, the BHP, those types yeah. of things. But there's other yep. industries, even energy stocks in particular. We might look at uh, just like an energy stock later on just to get a bit of an example of a, uh, a, a kind of candlestick advanced system with a pattern um, that allows us to kind of get involved in a momentum style trade. So I think I agree with you. I'm going to go down. If I'm looking at these particular ones on the chart, I think everyone begins here. They all begin with hammers and shooting yep. stars. And don't get me wrong, they're great candles, but really the stats are not in the favor anywhere near as much as the three-day preparation candles, are they? Yeah, that's right. And we always talk about um, yeah, having the patience to wait for a trade, right? The problem with a shooting star and a hammer, in the right location, they're absolutely fantastic. No, make no mistake about that. But they're nowhere near as important as a three-day setup because, mm -hmm. like I said earlier, it's very, very important that the market has a chance to consider uh, a, a particular level, especially on a bigger time frame like a daily and above. So when you're talking about a potential three-day setup, uh, it's very, very important that you understand that, you know, if the market was going to fail at that point, it probably would have already. Uh, so the fact that it's actually been considered and there is a, obviously a really good amount of liquidity at that point gives you a lot more confidence, especially in a supply and demand zone that you are expecting a bit of a reversal. I mean, they are reversal patterns. Like that's, yeah, no, make no mistake about that. But I guess the problem is uh, a trader mentality is often to go against the grain and try and reverse e every trend that they see, right? And it's very easy to use one candle as a bias to say, you know what, I think this trend is about to reverse. We've got a hammer, yep. let's go. Or we've got mm -hmm. a shooting star. I think what the um, those important mo uh, morning star and evening star patterns give us is the they're forcing you to actually wait just a little bit longer, a little bit longer, yes. Let the market consider the level. Let you consider the level. Make sure that you haven't actually missed something that could be blatantly obvious that you might have missed on one candle. Sometimes that does happen. Sometimes when we really, really want to trade, Tom, we just take any excuse for it. And, and those patterns taking three uh, particular time frames to set up the, the candles uh, can actually just halt you just that little bit longer and give you a bit more confidence when it does happen. So here's an example here, Ty, I guess of just uh, some... Some indecision here in the S and P 500. What are your thoughts when you initially see this? It's obviously a daily, so we have kind of like a, a bullish candle. We have kind of like a little bit of a rejection here, and then we have a gap down. Do you think that this alone is enough to make movements on, or is it more about the zone that it's happening at? And what would you call that? Would you say that's a perfect kind of setup, or more of a, a middling one for some reasons? Yeah. Look, it's it's got a bit of everything. I mean, look, it's, it's definitely. Look it's it's definitely got the um the basis of the level where it's at very very sexy no question about that we're at resistance uh we've got seasonality on our side as well uh, i mean we are in uh, a, a potentially you know historical week time of year uh no yeah the first part of may is generally a little bit soft so at, at resistance and we definitely get the um yeah we, you've got the shooting star there's no question about it, the basis of a pattern what i don't like about that candle um is mm -hmm. the fact that it's got such a big wick on the mm -hmm. the, the last candle if that exactly. was a, a red candle all the way to the bottom i would yep. be extraordinarily excited about that um there, there's no question but probably um it, it's similar to the could we just bring up an example on the on the us 2000 actually i think it's almost a little bit more clear cut because what i like about the um we'll bring up the us 2000 here for you for a second obviously one of the very important indices around uh, around no, the world as well. no we text, but yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely, um, yep, absolutely. so here it is yeah yeah absolutely what you're not seeing there is actually a, a 20 moving average um on the on the daily that is actually right on that shooting star and this is why we talk about location being so important because not only is it a, at a level of resistance already we know that we've got um a role reversal zone there it's very a very important role reversal zone at that but it's also got a 20 moving average right in its face and and we know yeah uh, you know, through so much trading over many many years now that the 20 moving average is an extraordinarily important moving average average especially on a daily chart and in a market that's a little bit suspect you can see right there the 20 moving average is basically you know 
solidifying what we probably already know. I mean, I could almost write a book on how many reasons why uh, you'd be looking for a shorting opportunity uh, right yeah. there. And what that candle does is give you the confidence that not only are we seeing it and expecting it, but so is the um, the overall market because this is a daily chart, right? Um, and the market had, has had a chance to consider it. And this mm -hmm. is what we're left with. Yeah, look, the previous session was an absolute stacked zone. I can tell you that this was a heavily, heavily traded zone. Not only was it a 20 moving average, but we also had a bunch of other advanced candlestick patterns. And this is what we want to go through. I know this is looking at the daily, but you can apply it to a 15 minute, one hour. It just will mean lesser things the smaller the time frame you go down to. So this encompasses something I want to discuss today. So many additionals. The first additional is the long leg dojis. So long leg dojis are another candlestick pattern that are often overlooked. What do they mean? They mean indecision, or as I like to call them, equilibrium in the market. Basically, the market has gone up, it's gone down, and it's kind of ended and started at the same location. So it shows us that the market could be at what it perceives at that point to be fair value. Now, if the market breaks away from the doji, often that's considered as a trading strategy in itself. However, I found it to be suspect at best when it comes to breaking and, and, and taking in advance. So this would be, okay, well, the market closes below these two dojis, therefore you would start to short. Okay, that's okay. That's the conventional way to think about it. But what if we thought of this as equilibrium and when the market comes back to these dojis, that something there was pretty big. The market then made a movement down and then it comes back to that zone. Clearly, whatever orders were entered here ended up being short orders, didn't they, Ty? So it's that yeah. idea of supply, because this is supply in essence, becoming supply again at the 20 moving average, as you said, stacking the confluence. Then we get the shooting star. No wonder the previous session was very bearish. And that leads into also a better storyline for the potential consideration of a continuation. But I like your idea of, well, it didn't close on the lows. So the first thing yeah. I guess I want to bring in here is it's stacked. It's not just one reason. There are there are three to four, even five separate reasons why these dojis probably hold orders. The big banks are positioning at this point. This is a rejection shooting star, which by itself is probably more of like a 53% candle, but because it's in the key zone with the 20 moving average is a lot more. And then we get that follow through. So the next session... The way I would trade it at, at an advanced level is as it goes through the low or as it comes back to a 61.8 fib. They're usually my favorite types of trades on these, Ty. One of those yep. two. Yep. And, and, and I think and absolutely. And, and look, you've got to be – you have to think – a little bit ahead of what the market's actually doing. Yeah, we, we mentioned a lot that it is a bit like a chess game where you are trying to think a couple of moves ahead. Uh, and that's where patience comes in, Tom. I mean, a lot of people don't have the patience to, they just want to get in and they want, and they want to trade. But believe me when I yes. say, yeah, when you become a professional trader or a full-time trader where you're trading, mm -hmm. you know, significant amounts um, you know, and, and real amounts of money where it's not just a, you know, are we going to have McDonald's or are we going to eat at the um, the local Italian restaurant on the weekend? Um, you want patience on your side because you don't want to be having to um, yeah, recoup bad trades. And, and it's a very, very bad habit to get into. Patience is one of the hardest uh, things to learn when it comes to trading. There's no question about that. Uh, look, yep. you know, T Tom and I will attest to the fact that when you first start out, all you want to do is trade. Um, and most likely you'll probably be over trading. Uh, and that, that's where, I mean, look at the common problem. I'm going to full screen. I'm going to full screen this for a second. So, so which one of us over traded, Ty? Uh, I think we're both guilty of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's me. I we're know I did. <laughs> yeah, no, look, we're both guilty of it. There's no question about no. that. Um, but you know what? I think it's an, it's an important lesson, Tom. And, and mm -hmm. we learned a lot from it. This is many, many years oh, ago now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and absolutely. we we learned we learned a lot from uh, those experiences, but I think yeah, patience is something that develops. You don't you're not automatically in tune with patience, especially when it comes to to setups. And I think that's why mm. I lean towards those candle patterns that we were talking about more because they almost force you into actually having that bit more patience to make sure that, that level is solid. We know that levels we know that yeah. there's uh, weakness in in May um, the majority of the time. We know that the market's at resistance. Uh, we know a lot of things, but Price action is king, and, and we know that actually more importantly, more important than any other lesson, price action is actually king, and yep. we have to wait for that price action to actually act on the trade. We don't trade just because the market's at resistance. We must wait and must uh, consider the situation before we place that trade, and when you learn that, uh, it becomes second nature. 
And, and that, I, that I, I can promise you that when you learn patience, you don't even realize that you've got it. It just happens. Uh, and anything that's rushed will appear very, very unusual to you. So we have a few people in the room here and they're asking some good questions. And if you ha have a question, by the way, this is a live interactive session. So if you have questions, feel free to ask them. We'll answer them throughout. Also, just a reminder, if you do enjoy these types of streams and you like these interactive ones as well that are a little bit more talking about the current market and conditions, remember to smash not only the subscribe button, but uh, hit the like button as well. So we've got a question coming in here from Dave, uh, sorry, from Brad Ty. And he says, on the breach below, do you look for a schematic? So the schematic is a uh, part of, of our day trading or advanced trading masterclass. Uh, it's not something that we, I guess we're covering really tonight, but yes, you could certainly look for schematics. Um, a schematic would be the first, what we call the first time frame change of trend. Is it the needed thing? If you have that advanced technique on top, it would be very helpful. However, realistically, in this case, you've, you've stacked some good confluence. You've stacked great supply, which led to a big drop, which has the doji candles because today is more about the candles. We can't complicate too much. We want to keep it simplification. So the <laughs> dojis hold probably the orders. The market is breached to the downside. It's come back up. It's hit the 20 moving average, our favorite moving average of all time. 200 also very solid in my opinion. Uh, and then we've also hit in here something we talked about a while ago, which was a volume profile. Uh, so there's a volume profile that sits and you can see I've got most traded zone. This is literally the most traded zone of the entire area. And that can be a helpful stack on top of it. And we did that a few weeks ago. So definitely search through to our volume profile uh, session where we talked about that. But um, Ty, can we just go back one step here before just in terms of advanced techniques with candlesticks and trend? You mentioned the close and the wick. So you said on the S&P 500, we really had to see it close on the lows. If we close on the low, I believe anyway, and I'll just quickly say this, that it, it's kind of, it, this is actually a technique I didn't even really think about for a long time. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes ultimate simplification or ultimate clarity comes after a long time. I thought mm. about it as, okay, well, the markets theoretically, I know, I know they're technically flowing all the time. But there's usually like this consistent cutoff after New York, which is considered when the daily closes. <clears throat> On the stock market anyway, or other markets that are closed and then open, you have to consider that during that period of time, the market was selling and selling and selling and selling and selling and selling, and then it closed. What's to say there wasn't a follow through after that close occurred? So it wasn't going to continue to sell. And this is specifically important when you think back to markets that used to close and then open again. So it's the close is the key because that has shown you that momentum all the way into the end, no one was a buyer. Yep. Everyone was a seller. So it probably means that there is a statistically good chance, especially coming off a key zone, that there is some form of follow through in the next session. And I'd encourage people to go through in their analysis and have a look at candles that close on their lows after hitting an important zone. And it's like this kind of one here. You might think, well, the next day's got to be a buy day. Does it? It, it doesn't certainly wasn't. Absolutely <laughs> it, not. It doesn't have to and, do anything. And it's even yeah. like, you know, it's something that we constantly think about in the markets. It's even like this one last week. We got this reversal up here and it went bullish. Now, I thought that was a decent zone to find sellers in. However, it did close on that high right into it. There's yeah. a good chance what, there's going to be, my, my suspicion on, was this. At the moment, Sorry? yeah. Could you just pop the chart on because we've, we've got full oh, screen. Oh, we're... my bad. My goodness. I lost the show. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, all the good all the good chart work's gone. I'm sorry about that. But um, yeah, basically <laughs> here we have uh, the... <laughs> I'll just quickly go back and show you the US 2000. Oh, my goodness. That's that's the first time I've done that in a while. So we get so passionate here, about it. That's all. <laughs> I, I was getting, I was ranting about it. Yeah, that's right. But um, <laughs> the, the close was the key. So if we go back over and we think about any of these these big closures down, not that that's right on the low, but when they tend to go on those lows or they go close to them, you've got to consider that it's probably going to continue on specifically to the daily. Remember, it's the end of that session. What's to say there wasn't a follow through onto the next one? So if we go back to the SPX over here now, which we can see, some of the things that I think were important were even last week, we had a close in the low, dead in the low. The next session, while it didn't go down much, it did continue the follow through. Then we get a close in the high. Actually, at a zone I thought could find sellers, but I you I actually expected this to occur, where it ran higher for the session and then pulled back. Didn't occur. It never pulled back. Just kept going. But it makes sense because it closed on the high. Now, if the previous session leading into this FOMC closed on the low, 
I think the market was probably telling us that it was yep. ready to go further lower and that rips, that is that the FOMC, would, if it ripped, was probably going to sell. Instead, where did it go to? Tyrone's 20 moving average. 20 moving so average. It, 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 yep. it's, unfortunately, it's very indecisive and that's tough. It is. Yeah, and, and in contrast, we'll just bring up the Euro USD weekly chart and I just want to show you an example of exactly what we're talking about when momentum sure. is actually on your side and you're, you're getting your, your <clears> closes <throat> on... Um, so there's, there's a there's a great example just on the um just early in um pro it's probably about February there right there the market has an absolute ripper it, it had a massive run you can see all those green candles in a row it's come back to the zone that we always talk about when we're working out a schematic uh and and then a massive massive sell off but look where that weekly candle closed right on the low okay so absolutely by the end of that week all of the buying it was exhausted absolutely exhausted and there was selling on the way now this doesn't look like a big move but remember this is a weekly chart you're talking about 300 pips there um yeah straight down and and where does it go to my favorite 20 moving average of course but that's the I'd difference that of when a yeah. candle <laughs> yeah, that, when when that candle actually does close on its low it's telling you something very very significant about the price uh, action in that candle the momentum and the dynamics between the buyers and the sellers okay mm -hmm. so and the bigger the time frame I, I, we we tell you this a lot but it's very very important the bigger the time frame the more important the candle okay it's very very important when you're talking about a weekly candle closing the way that one did Mm -hmm. uh you're gonna yeah the the chances of the next week being very very bearish are quite um yeah quite significant especially when it has tested the zone like tom said you've only got to look to the left of the chart to see how important that um that pullback to that level was and down she came so i want to talk about uh, a couple of other like kind of ex advanced patterns that i think work quite well and it doesn't mean that you put stop losses behind them, but it's in particular when you see more than one. So, of course, everybody knows the shooting star and the hammer, which are what we just looked at then, and we just saw a weekly version. But how do you do it on a smaller time frame? Well, a lot of the time it's about recognizing potentially more than one in a location. And what I always like to think about is an advanced technical analysis in, in terms of the candlestick concepts we have to think of wicks as most likely holding orders. And if we think about it that way, and we basically say, okay, well, a wick basically holds some form of strength in it. If we see wicks to the upside, what's that telling us? It means that the algorithms, or at least Wall Street, or whoever's trading this particular pair, is demanding that zone. They're seeing that zone as effectively a cheap level. And every time it's going down to that level, it's getting bought up. And one of my favorite things with the tweezer is, is actually seeing the second tweezer side take the high. So you'll notice here, this particular one gets a short and then you think, oh, okay, it could be short. Maybe there's other reasons. Maybe you believe it's short because of where it came up to or any of those things. Then we get another tweezer and it goes to a higher high. Now I said this in our community last week, uh, Ty, there's actually a trade that we saw as we were talking about it and was actually showing. And there's a lot of reasons to stack confluence on this uh, that I can tell you that are there. But the power of this tweezer, it's actually that the second one, so this, this one here, the shooting star effectively here, took the high of this previous high, effectively trapping liquidity. And when that occurred, it was very clear to me that this market was most likely going to, well, once it made that new lower low, which happened here, that you would probably be safe behind this high or this high here and that you would most likely see selling after this position. Then, of course, we get a news event, which comes up and retests that zone, very classic kind of thing to do, and then bang, straight back off. So I really love the idea of, of stacking two shooting stars, maybe even three, um, or hammers yeah. together, getting that tweezer concept, but also recognizing the advanced technique of if the other side is slightly lower or higher, it's actually more important. It's kind of like if we saw what some people might say is a double bottom here, Ty, if we actually get a fast reaction after it goes to a new low and then it instantly rejects that new low and you get that super wick that comes off this area, maybe even looks like a bullish hammer, is that stronger than actually that? In my opinion, absolutely. Because what it's done is it's gone and taken out people's stop losses, it's hunted new shorts and it's squeezing them. So it's it's just that little bit of nuance to think about yep. when you're looking at candlestick patterns, how have they formed?
Yep. Now, I know a lot of you out there are asking yourselves, but what if we don't trade gold, Tom and Ty? What if we don't trade the euro? What if we don't trade indices? Well, let, let us show you one more example on a stock that you can trade. So, you know, Purpose don't have CFDs, as you know. So you could trade, we'll bring up Rio, Rio on a daily. I think Tom will enjoy this. Rio is one of his favorite um, stocks. Mm. And we'll, yeah, we'll bring I'm up probably, Rio, we'll bring up Rio on a daily. Cool. <laughs> I'll bring yeah. on the daily I, and show you how important it is to actually understand that these work it's price action and price action is not particular to any uh, uh currency not any instrument it's price price action is price action look at that um yeah you can see the shooting star uh, right at the place where you would expect that Rio was going to sell off around that 124, 125 area. You can see the previous uh, mm -hmm. resistance on the uh, on the other end. We're only a couple of weeks away from uh, what is notoriously a, a pretty weak time of year, uh, especially for commodities like Thomas mentioned earlier. Look yeah, at the gapping, proper. exactly what Thomas mentioned earlier. Look at <clears> the gapping that you see. And then it was just constant smashing gap, gap, gap all the way down. Uh, that was, you know, that telltale sign of a, a lonely shooting star all by itself with no price action around it was your, your absolute signal to be on high mm -hmm. alert. And when, when you gap down there uh, and you had a, a pretty nice close on the next candle, you know, there was only one place it was going and it certainly wasn't going to the moon. Yeah, the, this actually brings up something which is um, effectively a gap up, gap down like this is what we call an island reversal. And it's a series of patterns where they kind of go, well, literally it relies on the gap up and the gap down or the gap down and the gap up the opposite way. And these are very, very powerful techniques. And it's not just Rio. If we actually look at some other things, here is the energy sector of uh, American uh, energy, literally energy stocks. And if you have a look here on the daily, this is a stacked zone. And what you might notice is that we get that gap up and we get that slight gap down through here through the creation. If we look at ZOM, which is, of course, Exxon Mobil, classic case. And this one is actually um, even a wipe off on top of that. So <laughs> they've all, they all started playing out over the last 24 hours. Uh, however, the, the point of it is, is really just to see that, that these things are happening in the markets all the time. And in particular, this one is uh, as a classic because it gaps up, gets very excitable due to that whole OPEC plus thing, has the earnings announcement, <clears throat> which pushes the new high. And then what do we see? A big wick. What does that wick tell us? Maybe when it broke up and went through that day, it was a false break. And then we get this. And then, of course, we get the gap down. Once you get the gap down, you have the pieces of the puzzle. The gap up, the island reversal, the gap down, and it just sold all the way through the session. And it's weak again today. And now all of a sudden, every bank in the world is downgrading everything to do with energy. So what, what it's really showing you is, is that you can apply candlesticks and candlestick concepts so powerfully with other techniques. And I think that's something that we want to bring in here today. The close is the key, is one of the biggest things that, that we've stated. If you're going to be any type of trader, when you talk to the biggest investors in the world, when do they put their money in tight? Do they put it in at the open of the market or generally near the close? Pretty sure it's near the close, Tom. <laughs> and, yeah. and and the, the thing is, look, you, you've got to do what the big players do if you want to play the big game, right? Yeah. And, it, and it makes sense that the close is, is the most important thing. A lot of indicators are based on the close. Why do you think that is? Yeah, you know, a, a lot of um, you know, institutions place trades on the close. A lot of people do their analysis on the close of a market as well. For people uh, who trade the markets but don't trade the live markets, they're looking at closed data because that information tells you everything you need to know about that particular candle. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's a weekly, whether it's a daily or one of the smaller time frames. You know, every single candle is telling you the story. And if you take away one piece of information today, um, one nugget, if you like, about why candles are so important, it's because no matter what the shape, size, color, or whatever it is about a candle, every single candle is actually telling you a story about what price did for that particular period. Now, again, I say the bigger the time frame, the more important that candle, because the more price interaction, buyer and seller dynamics happened inside that period. But every single <laughs> candle uh, tells you a story. And the, the great thing about price action and candles is they're simply made up by four pieces of information. Very, very simple. Couldn't get easier. An open, a close, a high, and the low. The only things you need to know about that period, Tom. And it sounds so easy when you talk about it like that, but it's everything that you need. Yep. 
this is that's why people people never never actually realize that this is the candle <laughs> when you look at the bar it's funny how no one uses bar charts anymore when was the last time you saw yep. someone using a bar chart no one no one ever uses mm. them and, mm. and they and they and they're clean and they you know look but the yep. thing is when you learn look when you're first starting out you've got to get comfortable with what you're looking at if you're more comfortable with um candle charts that's okay yeah it's probably the most um you know traded uh you know view in the world but some people are very comfortable with bar charts and if you do understand exactly what the dynamic of the candle or bar is mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. all the information is still there the high and the low doesn't change and the open and the close doesn't change it really comes down to a personal preference but yeah, the good thing is everything that you need to know about that particular period is there right in front of you. And when you learn to decipher what that buyer and seller dynamic is, especially when it's in an important zone, it gives you a massive advantage when you're actually trying to place the next move. So we've got some other questions coming in here. By the way, bring them through if you have them. Just ask them. There's no no harm. And there's no stupid questions in my opinion. There's only uh, great questions because everybody, someone else Absolutely. has that same one. Now, we've got a thing coming in from Dane. He says, I used to take a lot of positions. Now I only take around one to three a week. Sometimes I don't even take one if I don't see it. Well, that is the, you know, Dane's been in the community for a very long time. And, um, you know, I've known Dane very well. And I know that... Uh, it's, it's a massive journey and also that the level of patience that he's created over his journey is, mm -hmm. is astounding in comparison to where you always yep. begin. It's the same for us. It's the same for most people. Unfortunately, we make a lot of mistakes. There's a reason I say patience, react, don't predict. We've also got another one here coming from, from Brad who understands a lot about the SFPs and basically he said here that we've got the pound yen one daily just as an example where the pound yen came up to an extreme zone. Basically, it was on a massive heater. And you can see huge move on the pound yen, and it comes to this high. And what he said was, have a look at the one hour, and we'll see these double rejection tweezers. And there they are. And and it's not, <clears throat> it's not that I knew, and neither did he probably, that the market would stop here. You might have had this as a point of interest. Excuse me one second. But because we have it as a point of interest, then when we see an interaction with that zone in a way that seems replicatable, and what you might notice about this tweezer, it's literally, as Brad said, uh, one of the ones from before, notice how it makes that slightly higher high. What's that doing? It's taking out the stop losses that sit there. Man, you would be sad, Tyrone, if you sold that thinking it was going down. You <laughs> had your little stop loss above here and it took, oh, I'd put yep. double sad face. That would be, I'd say, it moved That's a lot. A double sad that. face. Oh, it's happened. I feel the pain of whoever that was. But yeah, th that's when you have superior patience. When you see this double and it has that right side, what a great example of something that just happened recently in the charts. So thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, excellent. Yeah, no, it's great to see. We're, so much of our community actually joins us at, in these Pepper Stone webinars. That's really good to see. You know, by yeah. touching on Dane, we're we're pretty sure we've seen Dane, you know, get grey hairs and lose them again because he's been the um. He, like Dane patient. might be bald now. <laughs> <laughs> That's not through trading. Uh, he's, he's actually a very very patient trader. Yeah, now. yeah. Uh, don't um, worry about have, that. Dane's ripped. <laughs> we have known, we have known Dane. And actually, to answer Warwick's question, yes. I think the gym is hitting me more than I'm hitting the gym, to be honest, Warwick. But yes, nah. um, yeah, and Dane is a fellow gym junkie as well. So absolutely. Look, the same thing happened on oil. Um, even if you go back on spot crude, you know, on the weekly chart, um, a very, very similar occurrence happened yeah, back last that's year. that's true. You know, all, mm -hmm. all the way. And, and it was a, a touching highs it hasn't seen in a very, very long time. And this was You're an extreme move. The, yeah, the 127, mm. 130. Uh, and then it came back and tested that level. You've effectively got almost an evening star pattern right there at the 123, then bang. Uh, you know, it's coming back, just like Thomas says, it comes back. I'm still dirty on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know why I'm dirty on this, Ty? Because we did that quiz and it had the price. What did oil get to? And I remember I put in the right price and then it said, oh, no, it was our version of spot. And I'm like, what? It, you can't make up the price. <laughs> I still, that was, I'm still that dirty on, on that. that I'm very, that a, I, I would have won. I won 100%. And then there's this, this stupid question. I, I remember I was like, what is that? Anyway, that's my own complaint here. Tom Pablo Marin says, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so dirty. <laughs> Pablo Marin says, Tom, will this video chat get posted? For those, yeah, it's instantaneous because we're here on YouTube. So if you're interested in uh, reviewing it, absolutely. Straight away. Uh, yo, you can watch it straight yo away. Mami, yeah. Yo Mami says, you got, yeah, you can watch it straight away. It's on demand. You guys mentioned patience a lot. How does a guy move forward when indecision, indecisive analysis paralysis kicks in? Yeah, it, it, it really is very important that you gain confidence in your yep. system as well. 
there's two ways that I've found and nothing usually is around a demo account. Either you have to go really small um, yep. So you have to get like a micro account and then trade smaller money um, as you build your position. Mm -hmm. We actually have something over on the FX Evolution website, which Ty created, which is called the Pressic Account Builder. And if you jump on over to www.fxevolution.com, I think you can sign up for free, yeah, Ty, on the website. Free, free and, course. It's and a what, free course. That's yeah. one of the most important, actually. Yeah. What it what it does is it kind of says, okay, yeah, you might be starting off with a small amount of money. Um, let's say it's hundreds or 500 or 1,000 or whatever, you know, whatever's big for you but still small. And you only reward the account when you actually make some money. So the problem for most people is indecision comes from the fear of being wrong and the and it, and it's a very scary thing. You know, every time you put your foot in the market and you think you've got something, it's exciting, and then all of a sudden it rips it away from you. That's that's very depressing. So I found that mm -hmm. that is a is a big thing. Uh, lowering your risk to allow yourself to take those positions. Uh, Brad, for example, here. Um, and Jet Dane might have some other great uh, concepts. Brad, do you want to tell people in the chat something that you've done? Uh, I know that you've you've kind of traded smaller up, and so is Dane over time. So if you have some uh, some feelings that you, helped you, let let people know here. Yeah, and probably uh, touching on mm. that, the one thing you probably want to do uh, if you've got analysis paralysis, strip your charts right back to the raw. Yep, uh, that's yeah, look at idea. price action, look at a couple of moving averages mm -hmm. and keep it really, really simple. Analysis paralysis often comes from having too many different uh, things too on many. your screen. Uh, really take it right back and keep it simple. Uh, and that's probably some of the best advice that we can give you to try and overcome that um, yeah, situation. Because the more things you've got on your chart, the more confusing um, your decisions will be. Keep it simple. Because trading yeah. essentially is a, a fairly simple concept. We've talked pretty much only about price action tonight, and you see how powerful it actually is. We haven't talked about the million indicators that you can use with it, but even yeah. in itself is extraordinarily powerful at the right levels. A good beginning would be to think about some of the candlestick patterns we've talked about today, the evening star, the uh, even the harami, if you ever see it, um, yeah. the shooting stars, the tweezers, the like some kind of Wyckoff additional. Think about wicks and closes a little bit more differently. That that will really help you out. Uh, and of course, uh, Dane says here: back test, back test, back test. Build stats and stick to the plan. Use maybe the replay function if you've got Pepperstone connected to the Trading View platform, or if you're an MT5, you can also go back through and, and test some of the price action based methods. It can be time consuming. Build a spreadsheet build whether you have the evidence to support it and you'll find that you're able to pull the trigger and actually get involved. Usually I find that over risk is is what trying to get there so quickly, you know, is is the problem. And Dane's been doing it for a while and obviously it's taken a period of time, but he's gotten there. And um, you know, I think he can be very proud of that work as well. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. He says he totally agrees with you. Second guessing yourself is also a bad thing, says Warwick. And uh, Yo Mummy says, especially with Bitcoin crypto or Bitcoin, you must watch a bit of our stuff if you call it Bitcoin. <laughs> it's definitely me, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, Bitcoin is tough. Uh, Bitcoin or Bitcoin. The problem with the Bitcoin market is it's super hyperactive both ways. Superior, superior FOMO, superior fear, and uh, it can make technicals a little bit more difficult. I usually think it's more of a a kind of a swing based system. Like recently, Bitcoin shorts have been incredibly good levels and even some longs. But generally speaking, the Bitcoin market can be very tough. You've got to get access to liquidity markets. Um, well, kind of like hidden kind of book map features and stuff. It's it's a little bit tough. I do find that usually currency is a little bit easier than Bitcoin um, and a great place if you want to do a lot more day trading. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's a couple of questions on, uh, you know, how to identify ranging markets, how to use, we've seen quite a few questions on, you know, mm -hmm. identifying price. A lot of what we've talked about tonight can be found in our ultimate trading masterclass, guys. For those of you yep. who haven't done it, look, for those of you who have, you, I'm sure you already appreciate how good it is. But for those of you who haven't, it does really form a basis of what we've talked about tonight. And I know Tom's going to post a link. Uh, we're having a sell in May sale that we're bringing earlier for um, Pepperstone clients. If you haven't done the Ultimate Masterclass and you are interested in price action, <coughs> candlestick patterns, and, and all the, um, the good things that we've talked about tonight, uh, you don't have to look much further than that course because it, re it really does highlight everything that we've talked about tonight and, and so much more. So, yeah, definitely have a look at that and take advantage of that special because um, it's a really, really good course and it has had rave reviews, Tom, rave. 
it's it's always good when you get good reviews like that's always a nice thing and i do appreciate yeah. all the reviews that um, people have given us scott says here if we're in a ranging market how are you confident in a breakout has occurred and will last long enough to take the trade after the breakout that's a good question and you really need to be comfortable with the fact that it has trapped liquidity there are a few ways you can do it uh, if you're using let's say something similar to wyckoff standards uh, which we've talked about here on the channel before again go and have a look at it accumulation and distribution let's say you believe that's distribution generally the way that it will work near the right hand side before it actually goes off in the direction is you'll see some kind of false break which is what he called a ut or a utad breakout and and this is that false break usually you get kind of some type of i like a lot of island reversals around this period and also tweezer um, shorts so if you get like a tweezer or you get like a gap up gap down island reversal they are let's just say top concepts uh, to know that, that that is going to be an extended break. And the reason it's going to be an extended break is because it has trapped the orders. It has pushed people into buys. And a simple way to always think about that, when you first started trading, would you have accidentally bought that zone? I've lost my voice. <laughs> well, would oil you have actually, accidentally yeah. Oil has given us a very similar, uh, if, if you look at oil mm. on a weekly, it's actually given us a very, very similar setup where yeah. it did the absolute trap and then bang down it came. Um, yeah, yeah, it was there. sideways, effectively the same thing. Um, tough one though, and, this. I was watching yeah. this one live. It was tough to, to pick that until you actually got underneath that zone there. So yep. once that happened, that rally was pretty easily shortable, but they didn't quite come back to the areas that you would have wished. So, so this one here and this one here would have been exceptionally good shorts. But in general, you get it. You can also remember you get a chance usually to get back in. The market will usually give you a second chance draw to grab that liquidity. And I, I don't find many markets that just go off and don't come back for for more action type. Yeah. And sometimes the ones that don't come back for more action, they're, they're actually probably worth leaving alone anyway. You want um, a predictable type of market that you want to trade. Um, and for the most part, we find we're very patient. We'll, we'll wait for it to come back. Yeah. All right, Ty. Well, I think that probably brings us to the end of today. So some of the things that we learned today, which were most important, would be evening stars, morning stars, uh, tweezers. I think are all very, very excellent patterns Shooting to add star, on to your additionals. Hammers. Yep. Yeah, all of those and, are really, yep. really good. But more importantly, yep. the close. You know, do we have a wick <clears throat> or do we have a lower low that then gets taken back? If you have something like that, well, all of a sudden it's stronger than the traditional way that you'll see it in the technical book because what has it done? It's probably made someone a little sad. And if it would have <laughs> made you sad when you first began trading, yeah, that's probably stronger again. And unfortunately, that's the way you've got to think about markets, but it is along the lines of an advanced concept. So from Tyron yeah. and myself, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Pepperstone for having us on. And obviously we hope you enjoy this. If you enjoy these type of live sessions as well, we would do Q&A, put it in the comments down below. Let Pepperstone know that you like this stuff. And if you have topics and things in the future, that'll be good. We will be doing some more snippet style content as well as we do these live sessions coming forward. So I think you'll be able to re-watch those in a very good format. So we're excited for that. Very Anything good. else, Ty? Now, thank you so much for giving us your time tonight, uh, team. Uh, very, very happy uh, to have you here. Uh, we look forward to seeing you, I think, in two weeks' time where we'll bring another yeah, very fun topic to, to the team. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you soon. All right. Thank you so much. Bye.